In the United States, obviously, we saw uh, President Donald Trump uh, inaugurated, and we got to see uh, Trump uh, implement his agenda, which was easy to do from executive order. Uh, one of the first things he did was withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and there was also his uh, travel ban, which that was held up in the uh, courts uh, for most of this year, thanks to activist uh, federal judges, but the Supreme Court uh, has upheld it. He's withdrawn from the uh, Paris Climate Accord and he's uh, reversed Obama era uh, environmental uh, regulations which were crippling the, the US economy. Uh, but of course, uh, getting things through Congress, that has proven uh, a lot more difficult, uh, obviously. Even, and they, this is despite the fact that the Republicans have a majority in both houses. Uh, Obamacare is still uh, in place, and he only really had his first legislative uh, victory with the passing of the uh, income and company tax cuts, which was just happened this month. Well, one has to understand how monumental these tax cuts are. When John uh, Fitzgerald Kennedy cut taxes, uh, he, uh, between 1961 and 1968, thereafter his presidency, and including his pre presidency, there was, they saw, I, I believe, um, uh, this is a bit rusty. According to the Heritage Foundation, about 60% uh, increased revenue into the federal government. When uh, Ronald Reagan uh, cut taxes um, during his tenure between 1980 and 1988, income to the federal government increased by 99.4%. Now, this is not only good for consumers, it's not only good uh, for consumers getting cheaper goods, for companies being able to employ more workers, but for governments to be able to get more revenue to build new roads, new bridges, and to fund armies uh, against the threat of communist China, which is omnipresent at this stage in the South China Sea. Uh, there will be a quasi arms race uh, going on pretty soon, if not if it is not happening already. Uh, and this this will be a way to reinvigorate Western uh, society, to reinvigorate America, and to breathe some life into the economy of of an economy that, frankly, that George W. Bush and uh, Barack Hussein Obama, frankly, did their best to kill, to murder, uh, to mutilate. Um, the US economy was on struggle street until Donald Trump uh, breathed a bit of consumer confidence into the economy. Now, uh, surely we can't overplay the role of one man, but certainly he cutting company tax rate, uh, allowing the Keystone pipeline uh, to come into place, uh, seeing the Dow Dr Jones go over 20,000 points, um, seeing you know billions of dollars coming back into the US economy, seeing share prices rise all over the place, uh, hearing announcements of increases in remuneration uh, to everyday working Americans. Um, Elizabeth Warren might call that corporate propaganda, but I call that real jobs, real growth and real prosperity. And I think it's terrific the job that Donald Trump's done here. Obviously, he's had a few failures with Obamacare, namely, uh, but I would love to see that scrapped, and I would love to see a world-leading privatised uh, medical health care system be implemented that can be a world leader. I'd also love to see the wall being built, and we can only hope and pray that both these things will occur in Donald Trump's tenure, and I think he's doing a terrific job so far. Uh, and, of course, uh, the political establishment, they haven't made it easy for him, and uh, probably the the biggest opponent of his agenda has been what what, what has been known as the the deep state, because obviously Trump came into office wanting to have better relations with uh, Russia, and of course that morphed into the uh, Trump Russia collusion uh, conspiracy. We saw a number of intelligence leaks, and now that there's a, a special counsel Robert Mueller who's now investigating uh, possible collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. And of course, all of this uh, 
you know, these allegations, there's still no smoking gun. There's still nothing to prove that uh, they, they work together. Uh, yes, there, there is about as much evidence as the world is flat as there is to Donald Trump colluding with the Russians. Um, of course, Donald Trump is one of the most successful businessmen uh, in the world. Donald Trump is perhaps one of the most successful politicians in the world. Donald Trump, of course, has done business with many people around the world and therefore he obviously has some kind of uh, business kind of uh, connections with Russia, but one must not confuse uh, mutually beneficial business as some kind of entanglement or some kind of collusion. That's basically all that's occurred. There's been no smoking gun. Uh, the only thing that I've seen, and this was Donald Trump Jr. Uh, talking to WikiLeaks on Twitter on his DM messages. And, and um, he basically told WikiLeaks uh, that he wasn't interested. Um, so th there hasn't really been anything. Now, th there has been uh, that fellow, his campaign manager, Paul Manafort, and and there has been Michael Flynn uh, talking to the Russians through back channels without the proper uh, permission or, or kind of um, verification from the pro appropriate officials, but it's a perfectly normal thing if you're expecting to get office to try and establish some diplomatic relations prior to being elected. Now Clinton was doing that. She was establishing diplomatic uh, relations through back channels with many players around the world, but no one really cares because she's lost. And, and Trump saying, I want better relations with Russia. I want to fight ISIS with Russia. You know, since Russia has been involved in the Middle East, um, Assad, um, has has gotten control over his own country. Uh, Islamic State has uh, been rescinded to, you know, a bucket of ash. And Russia has done a very good job in that geopolitical sphere. Obviously, they have interests with Syria, they have interests with Iran, um, but, but we're also both friends with Israel, Australia, Russia and America. And uh, we can all work together uh, to preserve some kind of uh, peace and democracy in the Middle East. Uh, we can all work to to fight and kill Islamic terrorism and I, a terrorist. And I think that this is this is very much visionary from Donald Trump. It's not a sign of collusion whatsoever. And this is just another lie and distortion of the mainstream media to try and muddy the waters, to try and ruin progress, uh, to basically uh, build up the deep state and keep the foundations firm for deep state control. You know, of the United States. They don't want power with the people, they want power with faceless bureaucrats. Uh, and that's simply what we're seeing from the mainstream media right here, right now. Yes, the, the mainstream media has been the, the biggest pusher of the Trump-Russia collusion and conspiracy. And let's not forget all the other uh, fake news that they've pushed. Or, well, no, well, not just fake news, but also non-news, like saying that, oh, you know, Trump's tweets, like, oh, they're the worst thing, you know, pre a president's ever done. I, you know, they, they seem to believe that, you know, saying mean things about, you know, journalists is the equivalent of committing war crimes. And, of course, recently we've seen them, you know, critique the way, you know, Trump drinks water. I mean, it's just pathetic. Well, Eisenhower was the first to utilise the radio as a means of communication. Kennedy was the first to utilise the means of television as a communication. Now, imagine if... The media was having a go at Kennedy in the 60s for using television. It's uh, it's improper. Uh, it's it's a realm of actors, of of kind of destitute drug addicts. You know, a president shouldn't be on the television. That's one way of looking at it. Or two is they just are basically all Clinton cronies. Um, that's another way of looking at it. On the on what you were saying there, Tim, about how Trump was drinking water. Personally, I think that Trump is a very eloquent drinker of water. Um, you can buy Trump water if you if you really want to try some of the finest water that's ever been on Mother Earth, uh, if you want to try some good water. If you want something heavier, you can buy Trump vodka. You know, I'd also encourage that as well. Um, but th that's just more media bullshit. Another thing is Trump and Shin uh, Shinzo Abe 
when they were feeding the fish. They were feeding fish uh, together. It was it was very cute. Um, they they were throwing little bits of fish, and then TYT, the Young Turks, those communist uh, assholes, basically said that Trump poured it all in. He had no respect for Japanese customs. If you look at the side by side video footage, both of them pour that little bit, last little bit of fish food both together at the end. Uh, if you really want to be pedantic, I I, I can uh, uh, beat you down uh, way down low and beat you with experience. But personally. I would prefer uh, to talk about facts and things that really matter rather than fish food and bottled water. Th these are things that I find to be secondary issues. I don't know if you'd agree with that, Tim. Yes, uh, it's, uh, I don't know how I see that, you know, drinking water is a sign of, you know, whether you're pres presidential or not. We have to remember that Trump was elected because he was unconventional when it came to uh, presidential uh, style. Uh, but also another side issue that's uh, been happening in the United States has been obviously, uh, you know, Antifa is still, you know, running rampant, you know, shutting down uh, uh, university talks. We saw, you know, obviously what happened at Berkeley with Milo Yiannopoulos and Coulter and uh, Ben Shapiro. Uh, oh, oh, we also saw the, you know, alt-right become, you know, quite, uh, you know, extreme as well. There was, of course, the infamous rally at, uh, at Charlottesville, and it, it really showed that, well, in my opinion, you know, the alt-right, the reason why they've, you know, become, you know, so, so radical is because groups such as Antifa have basically been terrorizing uh, the whole country, and so the alt-right has been a reaction to that. The alt-right basically plays uh, white identity politics as a they're reactionaries to the to Antifa. But if you if you listen to economics on both sides, they're completely retarded. But I can understand why the alt right has come to be is because of the prevalence of kind of left wing basically uh, hogwash and communism being thrown into the academic system as kind of worthy academic study. Marxism has been taken as a main line for worthy academic study in a lot of Western institutions. Moreover, multiculturalism has been accepted as a doctrine or some kind of religion by many politicians. You should see what that does to some working class, sober, especially in Melbourne. I, I've, been, I've walked into Dandenong before and I've seen the do doctrine of multiculturalism at its best. I've, um, I've tried to ask for directions. I've knocked on people's doors, kind of canvassing for business, and uh, about, what, about two in ten people could speak to me. And, the, and, and we saw that with Mark Latham's outsiders on the street as well. You know, no one can speak English, no one can converse with each other. Now, this causes a lot of friction in communities. If neighbours can't talk to each other, misunderstanding and mistrust kind of fosters. Uh, and and that, that's what's happening here. So we can understand that there's kind of neo-Marxism in the education system, there's failed multiculturalism, and then there's an economy that has left a lot of people behind, especially in that manufacturing realm, uh, because there hasn't been that education system to say that we aren't in a manufacturing economy anymore, we are in an information-based economy. Um, a lot of people being left behind. Uh, in America, in the US, this is occurring all over the Western world. Um, but certainly, the, I can understand why the alt-right operates and why they're here, but certainly um, I, d I don't like what they do. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.